What's wrong with that cake? Nothing with you, baby Herman. You were great. You were perfect. You were better than perfect. Just Roger. He keeps blowing his lines. Roger. What's this? A breeding bird. A breeding bird. Roger, read this. Look what it says. It says rabbit gets clunked. The rabbit sees stars. Not birds. Stars. Can we lose the playback, please? Roger, you're killing me. Killing me. For crying out loud, Roger. How the hell many times do we have to do this damn scene? No. I'll be in my trailer. Taking a nap. The great thing about the rabbit movie is we made it work. So people go to see it because they can't, when they see the clips on the television or in the movies, they say, wait a minute, that's not possible. Ah! How the hell did you get in here? Through the mail slot. I thought it would be best if I waited inside. See how I'm wanted for murder. It's as if you took a Humphrey Bogart Maltese Falcon film and shoved Bugs Bunny into it. You take two genres, the detective story of the 40s and the Warner Brothers cartoons of the 40s and... these three things that no one had, had ever done before. One was we used the, a moving camera, because to make life easier for the animators, the animators insisted the camera was locked off, static. So I said to Bob, I've already done these commercials violating the rules, and, and I know you can use a moving camera. We have to draw every frame, and we have to draw every frame in perspective as the camera's coming closer or going around him. So there's a lot of work for us, and very expensive, but that's going to make it work. Might try to kill ya. I can handle a Hollywood cream puff. I just don't want the ass to change. Will you cover my back? The second thing was we were able to get the cartoons to be two and a half dimensional. If you look at them closely, it's, it's not 3D, it's two and a half. <laughs> if that. But it works because of the, the moving camera and the lighting. Then the third thing, and the most important thing, is to interact the cartoon, so you have the cartoon here and the live action there, and if this was Laurel and this was Hardy, they do that all the time. Morris! Morris! <laughs> what Bob Zemeckis ended up shooting, if you were to see the film before we drew the rabbits and things in, it looks like an Invisible Man movie. You know, suddenly this is moving through the air and the coffee cups rattling. <laughs> The animation or the, or the drawings of the rabbit were always done later. So Bob Zemeckis would shoot his live action. George Gibbs would have all the strings and puppeteers. Bob Hoskins would act. Now that you're in this, Bob, you know, I guess we're committed to shooting this. I hope you went to the bathroom. Oh. It's bladders and it's like things are sticking you and things that, you know, punch your skin and. Oh, God, it's murder. Get down! Zemeckis would then come in to me and say what he wanted, and I'd do drawings, and he'd say, no, I want the rabbit higher, so I'd do a little drawing higher, and I'd sketch the live action. And the rabbit's like, doesn't want to go back in, and the Hoskins is pushing him down and pushing him down and straining him, and like, just like doing like tune squash on the top of his head. And then... We would get photo blow-ups, great big photographs of, of each frame of the live action, and then we'd take a piece of paper and put it on top and draw where the rabbit ought to be. It's basically that simple. But tell me, Eddie, is that a rabbit in your pocket or you're just happy to see me? The girls would paint it, and then we'd do the mats, making the damn thing look round. And then we'd shoot all those things individually and send them off to Industrial Light and Magic in San Francisco, and they'd put it together. And we were always surprised at how much better it looked than we expected. Somebody's made a patsy out of me, and I'm going to find a five. Hold still, will you? 
Yeah. Does this help? Yeah, thanks. This is scene 77.7, .7, and the rabbit looks over from here to here, and I've written, he's interested. So Zemeckis would have said, I want the rabbit just to be kind of interested. And then the rabbit walks around here to the box and steadies the box, innocent and sincere, and says, does this help? Does this help? Yeah, thanks. Then the rabbit puts his hand back into the handcuffs, in this position, though, Zemeckis would have said, I want it like this. Not like that. I want it like this. Do you mean to tell me that you could have taken your hand out of that cuff at any time? No, not at any time. These drawings are crossed out because I would have drawn them, and, and Bob Zemeckis would say, no, 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 no. I want him sincere, Dick. So I draw it again and say, sincere. he say, no. No, not at any time. Only when it was funny. <laughs> Come on, Eddie. Where's your sense of humor? He always is funny or only on days when he's wanted for murder? This is the first drawing that I, I felt comfortable with. And I was, it's, it's kind of got this coyote expression of a Chuck Jones character. And I just wrote here, he's a rabbit who's taken on too much. His wife's beyond him. My wife is absolutely impossible! I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Bob Zemeckis said to me right away, he said, listen, I want to do, I want to have three things in the animation. Disney articulation, like believability, so they don't float around, you know. So Disney skill, if you like. Uh, Warner Brothers characters, they, the characters should look like they came out of Warner Brothers shorts. And uh, Tex Avery humor, but not as brutal. It's a vile! Tex Avery was the one who did the crazy takes where the eyeballs, you know, Jeepers, Eddie, this will be a great place to hide. One thing we haven't in the got in the film is the that immensely subtle Disney animation like you have in Bambi. We don't have any of that. <laughs> You know, when, when Bambi's mother dies and the father says, your mother can't be with you anymore, that's hard. But r having a character go, and sprung, leap in the air and fly around the room, that's relatively easy. I mean, it doesn't require such good drawing and it doesn't require such good time. I mean, what separates the men for the, from the boys is when you have to do a subtle character. Pinocchio, why didn't you go to school? School? Well, I... Uh... Go ahead, tell her. I was going to school till I met somebody. Met somebody? Yeah, uh, two big monsters with big green eyes. The interesting thing is if you're going to animate crazy things well, you have to be able to understand r real things or how real actions work. The more you understand about reality, the funnier you can make your cartoon action. most important drawing is the contact position where the, the heel hits touches the ground so you do we do this drawing first and then this drawing maybe be 12 frames apart now the other important drawing is the one right in the middle which we call the passing position the passing position alters the character of the walk normally the uh, pelvis and the head are up so you get that now, if we were to vary the passing position, say that it was down, the head and the hip or the torso, the uh, pelvis are down, you get a walk like that. Say on the passing position, we put the leg out, so you get a walk like this. If the foot is dragging, somebody's depressed, you get a walk like this. So, if it's a normal walk, which somebody going to the store or something, or buy a newspaper, they walk on 12s.